Somebody once asked me the question, George, if you were a terminally ill child... <laughs> Somebody once asked me, George, if you were a terminally ill child and the Make-A-Wish Foundation were going to grant you one thing, what would you want it to be? I thought and I've pondered this for many years. I could get Dave Batista to give me a foot massage. I could do copious amounts of morphine. I could meet Modest Pelican. But no, deep down inside, I just want to be loved by my parents. However, that's never going to happen, so I guess next on my list would be Insomniac to make Sunset Overdrive 2. Before we jump into the video though, I just want to say a massive thank you to today's video sponsor, Opera GX. Opera GX is the world's first browser for gamers. It is a tailored browser for the gaming community that enhances your experience with features like GX Control. With GX Control, you can enhance the performance of your PC by limiting how much RAM or CPU usage the Opera GX uses with a simple sidebar. Not to mention the network limiter to limit the bandwidth used by the Opera GX browser to gain performance in games or when streaming. GX Player allows you to log into Spotify, Apple Apple Music, YouTube Music, directly from the sidebar, keeping all of your favourite streaming services in one place. It also has my favourite quality of life feature where it automatically pauses any music playing when you start watching a video or stream and resumes it once you're done. Twitch integration allows you to get notified when your favourite streamers go live directly from your browser so you won't miss a second and there's also useful messaging app integration for things like Discord, Facebook Messenger and even WhatsApp. Now if you're anything like me you love customising whatever you can and the Opera GX browser puts that control in your hands with so many themes, wallpapers to choose from, including your own desktop wallpaper or any you import. There's really no missing out here. Now we all know one of the biggest annoyances about changing a browser is getting everything set up, like your bookmarks, cookies, browser history. Well Opera GX has an answer to that as well with the quick import tool. Just simply go to your settings, synchronization, import bookmarks and settings, click import and you're laughing. I've been loving my experience with the Opera GX browser so far. You can download Opera GX from the link in the description and it's completely free. Let me know in the comments what your favourite feature is about the Opera GX browser using the hashtag installed GX. So we boot in and straight away we're tasked with character creation. I really like the body type varieties here. You've got slim female, slightly thicker female, the brother in every coming of age movie that does heroin, and Brock Lesnar. Naturally, I choose the Brock Lesnar body type, along with a hairline that surrendered quicker than the French army and a grey moustache. This is an accurate representation of how I feel on the tube. Train enthusiasts? They love it. But I personally don't enjoy a journey where there's so many people pushed together, you can literally sniff the dude in front of you standruff like it's a line of coke. As you can see, the situation's pretty dire and there's orange goops chasing us. So, despite being a beefy boy, our protagonist defeats the stereotypes and proves parkour can actually be a useful life skill and not just something millennials take up when every other possible life path has crumbled to pieces. You may also have just noticed how I called our protagonist, protagonist. That's because Insomniac forgot to give him a name. As much as I adore this game, naming your character is a pretty essential thing when establishing a new IP. Insomniac being the creators of Ratchet and Clank and Spyro, two games literally named after the protagonist, you'd think they'd know this. We quickly meet Steve, who is one of Sunset Overdrive's biggest side characters. Now I'm kidding, he gets eaten, but does drop us a gun that looks like a pair of gorilla bollocks strapped onto a megaphone. Despite how it may look, it's extremely efficient at killing the game's main threat, the OD, short for Orange Demons. You see, this all started when a bunch of teenagers were at a festival drinking a brand new energy drink called Overcharge. Because energy drinks is exactly what you take at a festival to get mashed off your face so hard you see the devil coming out of your kneecaps. Anyway, this energy drink has a small side effect that turns those who drink it into flesh-eating orange goops of mutated glucose and caffeine. Obviously not ideal, but hey, it's better than those darn people over at Monster Energy who secretly hide Satan worshipping in their cans. Now those steroid abusers among us haven't just turned into regular OD. Oh no, they're 20 foot tall and built like a fucking Range Rover. Because I'm Brock Lesnar's long lost cousin, only significantly more flexible, I could have handled this one on my own. However, thanks to fellow bald man for taking the heat, he frees up the door so I can actually get back into my apartment. Now I'm home and the world is literally falling apart outside, it's time to crack a couple beers, whack the work clothes off, and put the Rey Mysterio mask on. Because if she won't let you be a Lucha Libre in the bedroom, treat yourself king and be a Lucha Libre at home. 17 days and 43 wanks later, the OD have found a way into my apartment. 
Once again though, I am saved by fellow bald man whose name we discover is Walter, who over the last 17 days while I've been testing how many nuts you need to bust before nothing comes out, the answer by the way is 6 a day, has been on the front lines fighting off the OD, learning how to survive in this apocalypse. It's time to slip on some apocalypse friendly footwear, flip flops of course, and start bashing up the OD with a crowbar to show Walter what I can really do. Now, Walter does also show me some of his unique weapons, like this vinyl launcher, which is great for killing the OD, but extremely impractical because vinyls aren't cheap. Genuinely, my coke addiction cost me less than my vinyl collection. It's not a cheap hobby. I guess where we are saving money though is transportation, as if you haven't noticed, you can grind pretty much anything on this game. You see, this is a dimension where instead of heelys being invented, shoes with grind pegs were the wave. Anyway, Walter introduces me to one of his other bodies of the apocalypse, Floyd, a mad scientist that can craft me amps, which are basically steroids. Out here in the wild west, th wild west, what? Out here in the open world, though, it's not all sunshine, rainbows, orange demons, and grinding. Oh no, there's humans trying to kill you as well. They're even doing vandalism and attacking other people's property. Naturally, I whip out the 45 Magnum and deal with them pretty efficiently with a couple of headshots. I've literally gone from whacking off in my underwear to killing other human beings while still in my underwear in about 30 minutes. Life comes at you fast. Floyd says he'll cook me up a fresh batch of amps, and the next 30 minutes acts as a way to get you familiar with the weapons and movement. When it all clicks, the core gameplay loop just works so seamlessly. Like a roofie, you don't even realise how much fun you've had until you wake up 8 hours later and your arsehole is now 4 centimetres wider. Feeling fresh, it was time to see what old matey Heisenberg, I mean Walter, was up to. Turns out he's got himself a strap, and is casually unloading it onto these scarabs like they're teenagers who just kicked their ball onto his front lawn. I feel like everyone had that crazy old neighbour growing up that would shout at you for going near his property and molest you in his shed, but after helping Walter fend off these meddling kids, he begins to show me a project that he's been working on. A makeshift gliding helicopter thing. Basically, something that can fly us out of this city, as the city is the only infected place. He asked me for a hand holding the glider while he does something manly underneath with a spanner, but when the OD start approaching, I'm caught in a tough position. Now keep it there while I tighten this. Don't let go. Not yet. I want to go now. Go! Yeah, did you see that? You're lucky I was here. Look, I'm not saying it's Walter's fault, but he did put his full trust in someone that's wearing tighty whiteies, flip flops, and a Rey Mysterio mask. How do I make it up to him, you ask? Well, I just build him an entirely new glider. Firstly, I need a propeller. Where am I going to get a propeller from? I have no idea. But on my travels, I come across a dude called Sam, who I had to save from some OD. And let me tell you, this isn't the first time I found an Asian dude in a schoolboy outfit stuck in a storage facility. What does that even mean? Because Sam hasn't got sick parkour skills like me, he has to use mundane ways of travelling, like driving a train. Is that the right terminology? Driving a train? Do you drive a train? I think so. And now obviously, because this is a video game, it doesn't work first time and I have to defend him while he repairs the train, because apparently he just knows how to repair a train. While defending Sam though, I did make myself a new weapon, straight out of Terrorists R Us, the Teddy Bear TNT Launcher, one of my favourite weapons in this entire game. And being one of my favourite weapons in this game, it's quite the honour, because I like every weapon in this game, as it's developed by Insomniac, and they just never ever seem to get weapons wrong. Sam does actually manage to get the train going, despite not being a conductor, thanks to putting thousands of hours into Virgin Sim, I mean Train Simulator. He takes me on a journey all the way to the local pizzeria, where I meet some of his supposed friends. Ah, intelligent rich kids, thriving off Starbucks, inheritance money, vegan diets, and pointless art degrees. I took art in college, trust me, they're pointless. They do actually have one use though, they can build me a new propeller, I just need to do them a few favours. So I buy myself a new cape and underwear, ready to fill them with confidence that I'm the man to get the job done, and venture back outside. Firstly, grabbing a full 24 pack of extremely posh water that comes from the exact same place as all other water but charges dumb people three times the price because daily jerking off in the mirror doesn't inflate your social image enough. Secondly, going to find one of their dogs, and here's me, ready to meet my new favourite companion, but it just turns out to be a robot dog. This isn't what I wanted. It doesn't feel pain when I dropkick it like a real dog. <laughs> I don't actually dropkick dogs that much. 
It is, however, a pretty savage OD killing machine, so I suppose that's an upside. Thirdly, going to find out what happened to one of their parents. You see, when you're rich, your chances of surviving an apocalypse are actually 8.3% higher due to actually being able to prepare for such an occasion. If there ever was an apocalypse, I've actually got a bomb shelter at the bottom of my garden, so that would come in pretty handy. I'd obviously have to turn out the 32 Lithuanian children who I currently keep in there, because, you know, what's an empty space if you can't fill it, but I'm sure they're pretty okay with becoming a statistic. Anyway, I fight off some scarabs and eventually make it to the panic room of this girl's parents. They're not there, but they left a sweet message behind for their daughter. Max, if you're hearing this message, then it means you're still alive. Shame. Your mother and I are going to- <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the kind of message my parents would leave me. With all the favours now done, and surprisingly, none of them asking me for a couple of festival tickets and a kilo of ketamin, they cracked on with making me that propeller. Now, finally, we had the propeller. Walter and I were set to get out of the city and escape this infection. But some scabs stole a glide wheel, because of course they did. This is a video game. But I retrieved the glide wheel, and finally, we were ready to get out of the city. But when I arrive back to Walter, Fizco assault drones have now started dropping out of the sky and trying to kill everyone. Because this is a video game. You see, Fizco is the company behind this all. They made this overcharge energy drink. They have trapped us in the city. They don't want anybody to know that this went horribly wrong. They couldn't hold back the power of me and Walter though. A duo more powerful than politicians and lies. We finally managed to take flight after so many delays. First thing first, we had to take down the Fizco patrol blimp that was keeping us all in the city. For the freedom of our people. With that taken care of, we could get out of here. However, Walter would notice something was gravely wrong. And in an act so valiant, Walter would push me out of the glider, saving me from crashing into the invisible shield the city had been held in by. Walter was gone, but not to be forgotten. This was now about more than escaping the city. This was about revenge on Fizco for what they had done. You know, I've wanted to make a video on this game for so long, but I've always been a little bit unsure on how to do it because it's a game where you have to play to really truly feel how good it is. And I wasn't sure how good I could display that for a video, but I just tried to just stop overthinking it and just cracked on with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, please do let me know because I would be more than happy to play more of this. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And a big thank you as always to those of you who have clicked the join button and become a member of the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. I would like to take this time to give a shout out to my motherload void boys and above Gerardo Cruz, Bjorn van den Hetter, Charlie Waldock, Voy is gay. Thank you guys for your continued support.